Hello, wonderful pharmacy people. This is Dr. Lisa Faust with Diversify RX, and I have a great guest with me. Chances are, if you've been in the pharmacy industry for a while, you've probably have come across her, but I have wonderful pharmacist, Angela Orr, who has really dove into, into helping pharmacists in particular, but really anybody helping to manage stress. So I don't know about you, you know, raise your hand. If you have had stress, there's been absolutely, obviously nothing going on in the world in the last two years. Uh, but, uh, stress is definitely at an all time high. If it's everything from the pandemic to, you know, doing COVID testing and, uh, COVID vaccinations and everything in your pharmacy and having less staff or having to pay for more staff or getting your DIR fee bill, you know, there's a thousand things that are causing you as a pharmacy owner or a pharmacy staff member, additional stress. So I wanted to bring Angela in today. I had a great experience kind of starting and going through her program myself. And I thought it was absolutely wonderful and needed to be shared. So Angela, thanks for spending some time with us today. So for people who may not know you, tell a little bit about your journey as a pharmacist and how you got to this point where you're helping people manage their stress. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate being here today and to share my message. And I feel like it's so important, especially in this time, as you said, there's so much stress going on in the world. And actually, April, when we're recording this, is Stress uh, Awareness Month. Mm. So there's actually a whole organization about stress awareness. So to start with me very briefly, I'm a pharmacist of 37 years, probably many before many of you were born who are watching this or your parents, I hope not. But uh, anyway, um, so I've had a very, very interesting, long, varied career. I'm very fortunate. I've worked very hard for it. Um, I was the first one in my whole family to graduate college. So it's been really quite a journey. I have done many different things in pharmacy. I was a uh, started in retail and hospital pharmacy. I actually worked in hospital through my uh, college and then went into retail. I did home infusion. I did, I worked for an insurance company in Manhattan where we insured the city of New York employees being the executive liaison with the PBM. And what happened in the last um, couple of decades of my life is I ended up owning two of my own pharmacies here in Maine. That's where I live currently. And in 2012, 2013, you would think I had it all, two pharmacies, lots of friends, family, and I was so stressed. It was killing me, literally. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And the good thing is my surgeon told me that I was a very uninteresting case. So I guess it's a good time to be boring. <laughs> that is a good time to be boring. It's Absolutely. a very good time to be boring. Very, um, very small, very minimal, still cancer, but, but they were able to do, I only had to have mammal site radiation, which is right at the site five days, twice a day. So anyway, that being said, it, I really started thinking about what is this? was happening with me. I was very obese. I drank a lot. I think for, because of the stress, I was very stressed out. And I thought I need, something has to change because if nothing changes, nothing changes. And I started this self healing or self awareness journey. I'd always kind of been on that path anyway, as a person. And so I started on that path and I released quite a bit of weight. I still uh, wait to go. I'm, I'm working on that. I quit drinking two years ago and I had the courage to sell my pharmacies. When I did that and with this uh, path that I became, I just realized how many people out in the world are suffering. And that's only been heightened, I feel like, by the pandemic. I think it was there underlying a lot of things, but it really brought out a lot of good things, but it brought out a lot of bad things, the pandemic. I in my own journey and doing some of the things that I did for myself, I thought this is something that I can help others with. Cause I started to do that just organically and I pivoted. I still do work in the community as a pharmacist, but I'm transitioning to full-time entrepreneurship again uh, with my coaching business. And I'm a stress management coach. You cannot get rid of stress. That would be unrealistic to even think but you can manage how it affects you. It's not, and you can, you can manage how you respond to it 
and how it affects you. Because no matter what's going on in the world, and there's always going to be something, but it's our internal state that's going to determine how we live our life. Yeah. I, I like that you acknowledge that you're not trying to eliminate stress because I have seen things out there that, you know, claim that. And I always roll my eyes because it's like, well, then you don't know my life because right. you, there's no way that I can eliminate stress in my life. You know, we run several businesses. We have four kids. Like that is the definition of stress, you know, at least for, at least for me. And yep. so when, when you and I were first talking, there's a saying that you said that I kind of latched onto. And, um, I, I think it was something like there's, there's science in the woo woo. You know, a lot of times when you start getting into stress management, it gets in this woo woo area that sometimes us logical pharmacists, you know, very scientific people, um, I think discredit too quickly, whether it's, you know, leveraging meditation or journaling or, you know, some of these other coping mechanisms, as you can say, um, of it being ineffective. So tell me a little bit about the program that you're using right now in your coaching, because I started the process with you and we went through like the first session yep. and you really took the time to explain the science behind it. And there really is some very amazing science behind it, but go ahead and, and take us through this program that you're leveraging now. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. And what I like to say is woo woo works because it's science-based. There you go. That was it. <laughs> as a pharmacist, as yourself, and uh, I believe myself to be a scientist and I feel that if I am going to use something and then turn around and try to help others with it, that I really need to know how and why it works. You know, the, it's kind of ironic because how many drugs do we dispense, recommend or whatever? We don't even know the mechanism of action. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was looking up gabapentin once, a uh, complete side note. And it was like, oh, we think this is how it works. And I'm like, we don't know how it works. <laughs> most drugs you do not know. But most drugs do not have a known mechanism of action. They think that it works this way. What I like about what I practice and what I teach is that, so I consider myself the pill as pharmacist. As a pharmacist, I certainly believe in pills. I certainly believe in science, but I think it should be the last modality that we use. And de-prescribing is a very good thing, especially in today's age where so many of medications have been shown to have more of a placebo effect, but there's a lot of side effects. So the science behind what I do has been proven time and time again, and I can, I have resources, I've, you know, investigated and researched my primary mode that I use. So I use different things. I use definitely some breathing techniques. I use some meditation. I use journaling. I also now I'm using some EFT, which is tapping. And again, that's very interesting because it's science-based, but my main modality is with a company called heart math. It's an organization out of Cal Northern California, and they we have almost 400 published studies. So we're very recognized in the scientific world that we have actually shown how the things that we teach actually change your physiology and biology. So when you're very, very stressed, and this is going to be a very simple very simple um, science, science demonstration or science talk. But when we're very stressed, we have very high levels of cortisol. Cortisol is good for us. We need cortisol. It's the precursor. If you're a scientist or somebody in the uh, healthcare field, you understand what cortisol is. So it's something that we need. But when you get too high in levels, it can lead to a lot of physiological problems and damage in your body. And I believe that it's the precursor to a lot of inflammation, which is a precursor to a lot of diseases because you're at dis-ease. So it's a, a lot of underlying conditions, I believe, are, are due to inflammation in the body. And with heart math, it has been shown that if your mind is incoherent, that is, it's really kind of dysregulated and you're all over the place and you're thinking about this and you're thinking about that. And think about when you're really stressed, you get really tired, you get, um, 
you know, a headache, maybe, you know, everybody presents differently. And what happens is, is very out of sync with your heart, which your heart really has more, more information goes from your heart to your brain via the vagal nerve than your brain to your heart. And we actually have brain cells in our heart and our heart is also the only organ that we have that has an electrical current. So it actually does produce a field around us of energy. And when our cortisol is really high, but we do some of the techniques and some of the things that I teach and we can decrease, start decreasing that cortisol level, we actually can increase a level of DHEA, which is another chemical in our body, which is more about helping to produce those happy, happy um, chemicals in our body. And it really is all about, to me, regulating the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. When they're out of whack, like in the past, say, or ancestors, you know, you, you would get it that fight or flight because you're running from the saber tooth tiger and you're like, oh my God. And all of your energy goes to your legs and your arms because you're running for your life, literally. But then when you get away from that, the cortisol goes down, the, the chemicals in your body and in your biology regulate better. And you can go back to, you know, eating, um, uh, digestion, you know, you, cause you don't think about those kind of things when you're in that, you know, fight or flight. The problem with today, we never get out of that fight or flight. You know, your mother-in-law walks in the room and she's the saber tooth tiger, <laughs> that employee who drives you crazy walks in and you're like, ah, oh, that boss of yours. You're like, oh, so you're always in that fight or flight and you never give your body that chance to reset. And that's what this is all about is how can you, no matter what is going on in the world, still have some type of calming presence within yourself. Now that's not every second you have to work at it just like anything else. But if you can train yourself through doing these different things to come back to a place where you can get that sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system more aligned, which means more coherence in your heart, which creates coherence in your brain. Yeah. Um, I know starting the journey with you. And then also, um, I recently visited my good friend, Dr. Jessica Mills, who's a functional medicine doctor, naturopath. And I was doing some testing and stuff with her. Um, I, I know now that I'm a terrible breather, (laughs) like breathing is so critical to being able to reduce your stress hormones and actually being able to detoxify and there's lots of things that breathing has to do. Obviously I know how to breathe to stay alive, but that's a very shallow, almost very rapid kind of breathing because you're, you're breathing in so shallow. So you're constantly going in and out, in and out. And I know in our, our meditative session that we did together, the hardest thing was to continue to breathe deeply for just a few minutes. I mean, it was only a few short minutes, but I had very much difficulty doing that. And so I know from, you know, having friends like you and Jessica and many others that breathing and deep breathing is so important. And I've tried to be create some more awareness in myself around that as kind of starting this journey. I'm one of those people that I, you know, I'm obviously I'm busy. I have lots of things. And so I, I tried to add little things at a time. Otherwise it's, it's kind of overwhelming. It's stress. Do you get stressed trying to add your de-stressing program? You know? Ab- absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And that breathing, I'm glad that you brought that up because that is the simplest thing that we can do to really stop that reaction of whatever you're in to kind of like try to start to rebalance. And yeah, I tell people you, you just don't know how to breathe correctly. And they're like, well, I breathe. I will. Otherwise I wouldn't be alive. Yes, you can breathe, but it, it's that because again, it goes back to science. When you deep breathe, you shift some internal things and you're able to change your biology and your chemistry. Yep. 
you, you do have control over your body. You know, we think of so many things as automatic nervous system. You know, we're taught the ANS in pharmacy school and it's automatic. Like you, you don't control it. You don't need it just because you don't need to control it in order for it to work. Doesn't mean that you can't influence and, and change it. And so I think that's the big thing where you always talk about their science in it is that deep breathing calms your sympathetic, you know, increases your parasympathetic and, you know, all of these different changes. And then your hormones change. And when your neurotransmitter change, when those things change, they then change other systems downstream from them. And so there really is a big effect that you can consciously have on that. So, you know, if we have obviously a bunch of pharmacy owners, probably listening, to this probably staff members of pharmacies, if they are like, okay, I, yeah, I'm at the limit of my stress. Like I need help. When you say you're a stress, ma- stress management coach, what does that mean? Like, what does that look like? If they want to say, okay, Angela, I need your help. Like, what does that look like for them? For my particular program, I have a six month program. I feel like three months is, is, is not enough to really affect long lasting change. And I want, you know, my clients to get to a point where they don't need me. And um, because they are able to not only use the techniques and the things we've learned, but then to continue to use them on their own because they've seen such change with heart math. We start with a stress and well-being assessment because HeartMath has this new program out where they have developed this system for a big hospital uh, uh, chain out in California, and now they're offering it to everybody, and it's normalized. So again, it's science based, so it's normalized. You know, so I can take an assessment and help somebody pinpoint exactly where their stress level is coming from. Because again, we can't work on everything, but if you can work on a couple of areas, then it can overflow to other areas. And then we also use technology. So this is the fun part with, with heart math is you can actually measure your stress and you can measure your coherence. So we use an, a device that we clip on. It is paired with an app and we actually, I help. Uh, my clients set that up and then I, they can create a heart cloud account where each time you do a session, it records when you're in high coherence, medium coherence, and low coherence. And it's a, it's a biofeedback technique basically, but you can see it and you can measure it and you can see the progression that somebody has over time. So they create a, a heart cloud account where that information is stored. And then that way I can go in and look at it. I can get access and again, provide feedback. A, I can see if you're doing it or not. <laughs> Can't tell me you are and you're not because I'll see. <laughs> but the other thing is it helps you and I to really look at objectively. Cause again, as pharmacists, we want to see data. We want to see what, you know, why is this happening? So you can objectively look at where you are, where you want to go, and then the progress that you're making to there. And over the, the six months, we do the assessment in the beginning, in the middle, and then at the end. And then we use the biofeedback uh, technique of the inner balance uh, to measure that progress all along. I also uh, use other techniques such as the tapping technique and uh, some other things. So it's really all about just uncovering what are your hidden patterns around stress? What are your hidden patterns maybe about, I I think one of the biggest thing, and I think you said it earlier, Lisa, is that, you know, we do have control over certain things and we think we don't. And so, you know, I like to say happiness is an inside job. No amount of alcohol, food, drugs, whatever it is, scrolling, whatever it is that you do to, to avoid things, no amount of that is ever going to take that stress away. It may temporarily, but then it will come back in. So how can you then pivot to say, I can change this myself. And you can actually, some of the techniques, when you master them, like if you're in a very stressful situation, you can use it in a minute to just a minute, little session can totally pivot how you're feeling because when it comes down to it, how you feel is really what influences everything else. 
So the techniques with heart math and, and some of the other things, I mean, we have a lot of elite athletes who are coached in heart math techniques. Um, a lot of um, people who are in very high level CEO kind of jobs, because even like, say, let's take an elite athlete. If you can control your emotions and control how you feel about things, a one second difference can make it a winning or losing. So there are a lot of different people out there. I mean, we have hundreds of thousands. Navy SEALs use our, our techniques. Uh, the um, VA uses our, the techniques as well as many, many other. We actually have some corporate programs which I'm in the process of putting mine together for businesses to help their employees as kind of like an employee well-being program. Absolutely. Um, so I think that whatever we can do to help dr- decrease our internal stress has such a ripple effect. Cause you, you know what I'm talking about. You walk into some room and somebody's really stressed or like that negative dark energy. I call them an energy vampire. <laughs> And then there are other people you walk in the room and it's like, ah, they're a fresh of breath there. Now that's personality, but you can learn how to go from that brooding, dark kind of side to maybe a lighter version of yourself that still, you know, gets stressed at times, but can be aware of it and manage it. Yeah. I think when you're in a stressful situation, even long-term stress, I think acute or chronic, I think a lot of the stress comes from, especially from us type A personality pharmacist is feeling like I don't have control. You know, something's being done to you and you can't control it. So I think some of these techniques that you teach, even just the breathing or the tapping or some of the other things, like you're taking back control, which I think in and of itself helps reduce the stress because now you're, you're taking action. Um, One of the things that I always talk to pharmacy owners about is like the, one of the best ways to overcome stress or, or uh, indecision or uncertainty is to take action. Like taking any action makes you then feel like you're in control. So, uh, well, thank you for spending some time with us. Angela, if somebody wants to contact you to learn more about the hearth math program or any of your coaching, uh, maybe even like you said, you're developing stuff for employees. Uh, how can they get a hold of you to learn some more information? Oh, I can be reached at Angela at Angela or consulting.com. And it will also be in the information field. I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook, as well as my website, which is being updated currently. It is Angela or consulting.com because I do work with individuals. I'm, as I said, I've owned my own pharmacies. I understand how stress is in the workplace and with this whole pandemic and now so many other fallouts from that, you know, I understand about workplace stress. And so on the website, we'll have information about that as well as I hold women's retreats uh, yearly. Yes, absolutely. It does. I've, I've always wanted to attend maybe one of these days, maybe this year, maybe I will. Um, so thank you so much for spending some time with us. Stress management is a ubiquitous problem. And I think there's some really great solutions that you said, like it doesn't always take a pill. Um, I think actually a lot of things are even better than a pill. I'm, I'm with you on the pill is pharmacist. Um, it's always last resort for me and my family uh, personally. So thank you for sp- uh, spending time with us. We will put all of your contact information in the show notes. And I look forward to talking to you again. And probably when you launch your corporate stuff, we will, we will be uh, using that ourselves. So thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you, Lisa. I really enjoyed talking with you today and sharing my message that stress can be managed. Absolutely, it can.